as you've been told once or twice, you're all fat, sloppy civilians. The physical training sessions are calculated to correct that situation. All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a cool documentary about Marine Corps boot camp. And this one is actually from 1960. You guys know I love checking out some of the like retro stuff, but 1960 is an interesting year for Marine Corps boot camp because it's between the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Of course, you see a lot of footage from like the Vietnam War or, you know, Vietnam era Marine Corps stuff. And that makes a lot of sense, but 1960 sounds like an interesting year. So I want to see what boot camp actually looked like back then. I'm sure the training is going to look a little bit different, but the equipment I imagine is going to be very similar to what I had. So I went through boot camp in 2012 and we had a bunch of Vietnam era stuff. Like the bunk beds were the same. The foot lockers were the same. We even had like the H harness and the Alice, you know, sort of Alice gear. So if I can get a picture, I'll put it up. But yeah, it was a lot of really old stuff. So it's probably not going to look too different, but the training focus is probably going to be a little different. So should be cool. Let's check it out. Yep. You gotta start with the Marine Corps hammer, of course. Uh, Flamethrowers, there you go. It's already different. These are United States Marines. They're professional fighting men dedicated to the defense of their country and fiercely proud of their Corps and its traditions. Hell yeah. The Marine holds a unique position and reputation in the profession of arms. One of their own, hmm. Colonel John W. Thomason Jr. wrote of them, you could find every sort of man from every sort of calling. <laughs> there were large, bone fellows from Pacific Coast lumber camps and tall, lean southerners who swore amazingly in gentle, drawling voices. That's funny. Uh, yeah, that is very, very true. When I was in, again, you saw everything. And you see everything, especially when I was at the School of Infantry. That was when I really realized it because that's when you first start actually getting liberty, which is, you know, sort of time off during the week. You start seeing what everybody's wearing for their civilian attire. So you start seeing the cowboy hats come out, the, the boots, the skinny jeans, the ripped jeans. You see everything coming out because you see a lot of different people. Like the you'll have the, the boring dude from Ohio. You'll have the California skater. You'll have like the really corn fed looking Alabama dudes. You have the Cajun Louisiana people. You got like the Italians from Jersey and whatnot. You get everything. And it's pretty cool to see how it all melts together and works really, really well in an organization like this. Because, of course, none of that stuff really matters when you're just focused on, you know, fighting wars and being violent. And tall, lean Southerners who swore amazingly in gentle, drawling voices. <laughs> Husky farmers from the Corn Belt and youngsters who had sprung to arms from the necktie counter. The Diverse people who ran curiously to type with drilled shoulders and a bone-deep sunburn and a tolerant scorn of nearly everything on earth. The nice. old breed of American regular regarding the service as home and war as an occupation. Ooh, okay. Oh, I have never seen these before. These look really freaking cool. It's like a, an old school AAV, which is like the amphibious vehicles that we had when I was in the Marines, but okay. I've not seen these before. It's kind of cool. Definitely an improvement to what we saw in like World War II. Today, this old breed of American nice. regular has to function in terms of a great many new techniques. In addition to his skill at amphibious assault, he is now mastering the method of attack known as vertical envelopment. The <laughs> yes. gives him the ability to move swiftly ashore regardless of beach conditions and to come in where his enemy is not. To That's open the so attack cool. on terms and at the place of his own choosing. The Marine of today must be ready for any kind of fight from a brush fire war to full scale nuclear combat. Oh my gosh. The Marine Corps enlistee comes <laughs> to be one of these professionals, ready and able to take his place in America's defensive armory. How he comes to be a Marine. This is the story we want to tell today. All right. I'm excited. <laughs> nuclear war. There's not a whole lot you can do about nuclear war, especially as a, an infantry Marine. There are Marine. two Marine Corps recruit depots. One at San Diego in California and a larger one at Paris Island, South Carolina. Yes, sir. Training at both installations is the same and the objective the same. The making of Marines. Yeah, some would say the objective is the same, but the execution is not necessarily the same. I would say I don't really see a difference. I mean, I think that's only a thing when you're new in the Marine Corps as far as that rivalry between Paris Island and San Diego, those, those Hollywood Marines. Again, once you get more and more in the Marine Corps, you don't really notice that, and you also just don't really care. 
The setting for our story is Paris Island. Hell a busload yeah. of new recruits is arriving for training. That's where I went. Where's the yellow footprints at? Your first look at Paris Island is a quick one. You move directly from the bus into the rest. Oh, that's crazy. The infamous yellow footprints that weren't even adopted yet. That was adopted a little bit later on. I think maybe in like the mid 60s. That's funny. That's kind of weird. They're just getting off of a bus and, and going in. There's no like, it's kind of like a herding area. Those yellow footprints where you really start getting to the mind of everybody. But okay. That's kind of cool, I guess, too. It's like the corporal said. From now on, there's no such thing as wasting time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Processing starts right off with another batch of questionnaires to fill out. But the paperwork is just about over. Hmm. Looks like paper. This is a campaign <laughs> ad. It is the badge of the drill instructor. Are you people? Yep. Look up here. Face your eyeballs on me. I'm your drill instructor, so take a good look at me. For the next 12 weeks, you're going to see me morning, noon, and night. 12 weeks, the same, yeah. I'm going to be your mother, yep. father, sister, and brother. I'm going to spend every minute making you in the Marine. You make any mistakes, and I'll be right on your back. Make too many, and you won't be around this platoon very long. <laughs> when I tell you to move, you'd better jump. You're going to learn courtesy and discipline as well as you know your own name. Whenever you speak to nice. me, the first word out of your mouth, I'd better be sir. I get those eyeballs straight to the front. You there, boy, I said straight to the front. <laughs> I don't want to see one eyeball quiver. You learn right here and now to keep your eyes and ears open and your You know mouth he practiced shut. that. All right, face to the right. Follow me. Uh, I will say, so he's definitely got like the drill instructor voice, but it's very, very different because when I went through, it was immediate yelling, like people just yelling at the top of their lungs to sort of, you know, give you that shock and awe, everything that you expected from Marine Corps boot camp. But honestly, I think this is pretty cool too. It's a little bit like threatening, especially with his voice, since his voice is, is gone. <laughs> He's kind of using his, his throat to speak, but it's kind of threatening, but not necessarily like overwhelming to the point where it's like, I don't know what you're saying because you're just yelling incoherently. <laughs> so far, all you've been given is the towel around your neck. Hmm. Now you move off in formation, if you can call it a formation. Oh, is that for the haircuts? Did we do the same the thing? Jima statue, you can't help wondering if those guys were as full of butterflies when they started training as you are. That's a cool perspective. The next thing is to shed your civilian clothes. This is where you kiss them goodbye. Yep. You can send them home or give them to the Salvation Army or burn them, but you can't keep them. <laughs> That's where the towel comes in. Okay, this is very, very different. Uh, we got haircuts, but we got haircuts when we were still in our civilian attire. I don't know when we, I think after that you get all like your gear, you get your PTs, you get your running shoes, and then you start getting like your actual uniforms and your boots and whatnot. I think that's when we really started, you know, dropping all the stuff. I think we were wearing like the PT uniform for a while before we actually started rocking the uniform and boots, but this definitely doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> We're probably gonna see the exact same barber that I had. They were like old as dirt. <laughs> and that that haircut All hurts. Marine recruits will be uniform in appearance, trim and clean. The recruit haircut does make for cleanliness and uniformity. No doubt about that. Oh, okay. That should give him a high and tight. We didn't get a high and tight until like the end of boot camp. They just shaved everybody's head. I guess it took too much time to actually do a an appropriate haircut. That is actually a pretty nice fade for how quick that was. Okay. Every recruit will take a thorough shower following the haircut session. Now you're ready for a uniform. Showers look different too. A little bit. When you bit. get that first issue of clothing, you begin to really believe you're in the Marine Corps. This looks the and same. you are. But you're not a Marine, not yet. Nope. They take a lot of time and care to make sure that every man's shoes fit his feet exactly. And for a good reason. So they did do the same thing for us, but I got to say, everybody's boots were like, I don't know. I think the boot company was just like a scam because none of the boots fit anybody's feet properly. So after about a week, everybody's feet were just like destroyed. It was the first time wearing boots, but even still, like you wear them later on and they still don't fit right. So I don't know what's going on with those boots, but they just never seem to fit right. Marine Corps boots are just not that good. A lame Marine's no good to anybody. <laughs> 
Your gear is issued by the numbers. The sergeant explains it this way. Don't move till I say move. And when I say move, move. That's the same. That's cool. That's funny to see. That's the way it's done. By the numbers. Hmm. That is very, very similar. By the time you get settled down, get your barracks cleaned up two or three times. It's yes. Okay. These are like exactly the freaking same. The really uncomfortable racks with the super thin mattresses and the wooden foot lockers. For lights out. When a DI comes into the room, you will be on your feet. Hmm. You can take your time stowing your gear as long as it's not over five seconds. <laughs> in the morning, training uh -huh. will start in earnest. But right now, you learn another Marine Corps tradition. Evening prayer. It's silent, each man to his own. I think we... I'm not sure if we did that. Actually. Once again, and from now on in every thing we did. you find out, a recruit does things by the numbers. Stand by to hit your racks. Out of your shoes. Yep. <laughs> on your racks. Move. Move! Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a hygiene thing, but that's how we had it as well, where the pillows were alternating. And the racks, again, the, I can tell the blankets are exactly the same. The sheets are the same. They set it up exactly the same way. And yeah, it is like this, where you're basically doing things in stages. So you don't enjoy anything. You can't even enjoy going to bed because this is how you'll go to bed. Sometimes they'll have you like rip the sheets out. So you have to make your rack again. But yeah, you just go to the position of attention on your rack and it's, uh, yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll basically wake up in that position as well because you're so tired. All right, get inside them. Look how much they're moving, the racks. <laughs> Jeez. You people will be quiet. You people will go to sleep. Yeah, I mean, there's really no question about it. You can't do anything else. You won't do anything else. For 12 weeks, you'll eat, sleep, and dream Marine Corps. <laughs> you'll attain a physical fitness you've probably never known. And you'll make friendships that will last as long as you live. Mm. You'll gain the same pride, self-respect, and love of the Corps that marks your D.I. as you earn your place in the company of an elite body of men. Hell yeah. I gotta say, though, there was a lot more drama in boot camp than I expected. And as far as making friends, yeah, you'll kind of make friends, but not really. It's not going to maintain for too long. The wake up is really fun. The lights just turn on and you immediately have to get right out of bed. Now, however, all that's ahead of you. And today you begin in earnest. Oh, they got the band? Okay. That's pretty fancy. It's a little excessive. Man, look at those slippers. Those look brutal. The Corps takes first things first. As you've been told once or twice, you're all fat, sloppy civilians. Mm -hmm. The physical training sessions are calculated to correct that situation and to teach you to work together. Look at those old school uniforms. Oh man, it looks like it hurt your back. Crunches with straight legs. <laughs> I like the short shorts and everything too. It's a very Marine thing. Your best seasoning and teamwork comes with close order drill. Some of these guys look like super young and then some, I mean this dude looks like he's probably like 30. And you kind of see that a little bit as well when you're in boot camp, but mostly these guys look extremely young. So I'm wondering if the age requirement back then was different, but I think it's just generally because I'm older now. I'm sure I looked that young when I was going through boot camp as well. It's just weird to see. Yeah, but. Drill is something you do a lot in boot camp. I was not really a big fan of it. A lot of people really loved it, but to eat to remember, own, I guess. if you don't remember, your DI will take time to remind you. Boy, you are outstanding. You know that? Yes, sir. I <laughs> you. Yes, sir. The confidence course is it. rightly named. As with the rest of the recruit training, it starts with easier obstacles and works gradually up through the tougher okay. ones. Yeah, the obstacle course. Nice. It's exactly the same too, except a little bit more shabby looking. All the obstacles are exactly the same. Yeah, they did. They didn't even smooth it out. Some of the final ones you don't get to until late in the training cycle, which is all right nice. by the recruit. 
There's plenty to do in any one day without trying to do everything at once. Hmm. Look, they're all climbing without their feet. That's impressive. Uh, the knot. Count. You saw the one that had the knot for the people that struggle, I guess. <laughs> Calisthenics under arms is part of the training, which brings you to feel that your rifle is as much a part of you as your hands and your feet. I'm glad we don't the do that anymore. The relationship between a Marine and his rifle is a special thing, and the recruit finds it out early. They got now, a special uniform for that? The DI stay on your back, something begins to happen. One day you can feel that you and the others are working together smoothly, knowing what to do, That's doing true. it with precision. This is the moment, or at least one of the moments, <laughs> When pride takes root and starts to grow. Like that is true. Really. There's a lot of growing pains early on, but you get to a point where it's like, you know exactly what to do. You can expect what's coming next. And you just do it because obviously, you know, there's no point in, in trying to fight it. You, you're there for a purpose and you kind of just understand that you're just going to do it, get it over with, and then get out of there. And yeah, everybody tends to learn that eventually. Sometimes it takes longer than others. There's a basic satisfaction in doing a thing well. <laughs> True. So also our formations, we had all the short people in the back. Don't get the idea a recruit ever gets a chance to start feeling smug, though. If there's any way to satisfy a drill instructor short of absolute perfection, nobody's found it yet. Every recruit <laughs> learns the rifle creed. It starts like this. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is We mine. actually didn't learn that. My rifle is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. My rifle without me is useless. Without my rifle, I am useless. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of creeds, not gonna lie. I'm glad we didn't have to learn that. If you get attacked and you want to walk away with your life, do not use traditional Because I'll say the Army has a lot more creeds than the U.S. Marines does, and it's just a pain in the butt. You get like a new unit, all of a sudden there's a new creed. Like every MOS has its own creed, and it's just, it's too much to remember. There's no point. The Marine Corps as a whole has to be ready for amphibious operations. What's going on that here? Are they on the sun? Too. You'd be surprised how many guys don't know how to swim when they start training, but they learn Me, before they're kind of. By the numbers. <laughs> we didn't have to do this. They kind of just threw Sunday, you in the pool. A recruit can go to the church of his choice, and he's encouraged to do it. It's a simple fact that a basic part of America's strength lies in its faith in God. And who's got so much strength he couldn't use a little more? Yo, we could go to church as well. A lot of times, you would just go to church to get away from the drill instructors. They would kind of be out of your hair a little bit as well if you stayed in the squad bay and didn't go to church. But they would come around every now and again. So people would just decide to go to church anyway. Also, you, you can get like some snacks and whatnot when you went there. So, yeah, it was a little bit nicer to go and do that. But again, you are like organized going to, there to comes church a time as well. Finally, when you start learning to fire the weapon you've all been right. taking such tender care of all this time. Hell yeah. As with everything in recruit training, this goes step by step. Initial firing with the M1 is done at close range, one round at a time. Huh. And they still have the M1 Garands too. Or Garands, whatever. So the This is serious business and every man has in mind to become an expert. So as far as how monotonous it looks, it was the same for us, but I wonder if their qualification was different. I don't know if they shot at the 500 yard line because for our qualification, you shoot at the, two, the 200 yard line, the 300 yard line, and the 500 yard line with your M16. And then you have, you can see here how the, the sling is looped around their bicep. You have the same thing in Marine Corps boot camp with the M16 and you sort of loop it right here and it's right over the artery. So you get like a really nice platform to the point where you're looking through your because you know there's ACOGs now. You're looking at the ACOG and you can see your pulse in your optic. That's how stable your platform is. So it's really awesome to learn how to actually shoot like that. Not necessarily practical for combat, but it is pretty cool. There's another part of the rifle creed which says, my rifle and myself know that what counts in war is not the rounds we fire, the noise of our burst, nor the smoke that we make. We know that it is the hits that count. We will hit. <laughs> okay, I like that. It's a very old school, but I like it. Yeah, the, oh, it's the same exact targets, too. 
Meantime, a oh, new age here we of go. physical conditioning goes on. The fat comes off and working muscle takes its place. What's it the, the hats? The instructors do what you do. And a lot more, since they do it with several groups a day. Recruit training Ooh. isn't easy, but along the way you learn something very important. You learn that you can go until you can't go anymore. And yeah. then go some PT more. can look a little goofy sometimes. We had the same thing where we had the instructor up on the table. But I feel like the formations were a lot bigger. In my platoon, we had, I think, like 90-something people to start with. And we graduated with, like, 72. So it was a lot of people. So you had, like, multiple platoons around this dude on the table. So you couldn't really hear. They were yelling. But you, you were kind of just following what everybody else was doing. Don't get the idea recruit training is all muscle work, though. You spend hmm. plenty of time in the classroom, too. Busting your skull over subjects like Marine Corps history, yep. map reading, nuclear biological chemical warfare, personal hygiene, American democracy, the hmm. mechanics of weapons. Okay, pretty much the same. One high point in the training comes when the recruits take part in a field meet. The various events are familiar, some of them. Oh, Others we didn't get to do this. uniquely military flavor, as you'll see. This is kind of cool. Gone into with plenty of yelling and laughing and enthusiasm. This would have been awesome, actually. Just get that competition going, because you don't really have competition so much in boot camp. Nice. This would have been freaking sweet. You don't really do anything in boot camp to like make you stand out as an individual, which is like good, but also not so good because having that competition really helps with pushing people a little bit further and just trying harder. I guess families were involved with this as well, so this must be towards the end or something. This, that's so goofy. Why is that ever a thing? Is that still done? Like outside of middle school. <laughs> Golly. Something new in the training program is bucket drill. Remember how you used to play with sand in a bucket when you were little? What the Forget fuck? it. Here you start off with a little sand and it feels like a ton. But before long you can handle it okay. Whenever this happens, they add more sand. That's so weird. I mean, okay, weightlifting, I guess. <laughs> all right, yeah, get the the traps going. I like it. Bucket they have their own buckets. All the advantages of working out with weights plus one more. You can't wash your underwear in a barbell. Oh my gosh, what an old school mindset. Looks like they have their names on their buckets though. To a marine, the bayonet nice. is part of the rifle. He learns to use it and use it aggressively. Hell yeah. One of the tools you have to work with is a rifle-length bar padded at both ends. Yep. It's called a pugil stick. In yep. the first sessions, you work nice. against a dummy, but you keep in mind what you've been taught. So we actually didn't do pugil sticks until it was just like a, you know, going against each other. We didn't learn on pugil sticks. We did bayonet drills and we did like a bayonet assault course, which was, not gonna lie, pretty underwhelming. But we didn't get to do anything like this. This would have been pretty cool. What I like to see a little man get out here and do something. That's all it takes. It's not how big you are, it's how good and aggressive you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun. Lose control of that weapon, son, you're long gone. <laughs> Next, you True. put on gloves and a football helmet and pair off. Nice, yep. Drop down the pitchfork blow and then you'll have your head knocked off. Boy, all you're doing is you had your head down swinging. Yeah, so we did pugil sticks like three times. Two of the times I won, but then one time I just got <clears throat> destroyed. Like I ran up and dude just uppercutted me and then, you know, butt stroked me and I just landed right on my ass. It must have been an incredible sight because I got messed up. Oh, and then you'll have your head knocked off. Boy, all you're doing is you had your head down swinging. Swing that guy, blood the blade. You like you want to cut somebody's head right off his shoulders. All right, come on. <laughs> he sounds like he's from Tennessee or something. At this stage, you're working with the final and roughest mm. section of the confidence course. And every time you successfully do something yep. you never thought you could do, just that much more confidence and assurance is the result. I didn't like heights, so I didn't like the confidence course too much. 
It's really not too hard, it's just kind of... It's alright. I love obstacle proportion in general, so... Yeah, that I was not a fan of. It was way taller than I expected. They're doing a little bit quicker than we were, though. We had to do it like pretty slow. You've been learning in stages from the beginning. You don't usually have too much trouble, hmm. even with the tough one. The tough one? What is this? Oh, the A-frame. Okay. That yeah, wasn't tough. Again, not a fan of it because I, I don't like heights or I didn't like heights. Yeah, just look at that. It's so weird. The man who completes his training over oh, the my God. confidence course may someday run into a physical obstacle for which this thing the slide for life like you can you can do it like this because if you you know like slothed it so to speak you basically just were told to drop because you had to go down you know with your leg hooked over it on the top pulling your way down and if you rolled over then you're kind of like sol so for me i was like really focusing really hard so if you rolled over like this and they would just tell you to drop and there was there was a net but there's also a lot of water there's like a, i don't know like a little pond or something underneath it so you would get soaking wet luckily i didn't get soaking wet because i i you know i made it past it okay but you'd see like half the dudes were just soaking wet because they were told to drop so it's like he's a, it's like okay, I didn't have to but drop and get likely. soaking wet. If he's called on to climb, scale, swing, crawl, or slide, it won't be anything new. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yeah, they got a net now, so there's that. You still get wet though. <laughs> of course, not everybody makes it the first time around, mm -hmm. but they learn, and that's what it's for. In the oh, final snap. weeks, things seem to move faster and faster. You don't know what to expect and what's expected of you. And you're better able to meet those expectations. True. You begin to think that maybe you're going to make it after all. The pace doesn't let up any, but that doesn't bother you like it did at first. Hmm. That's kind of cool they got the weather bayonets. The fact is, you're catching on. You're beginning to feel at home in the uniform of a United States Marine. A little bit. <laughs> uniform looks exactly the same, though. A service uniform. Finally, the big day comes. Almost, but not quite, before you're prepared for it. The final <laughs> review marks the end of recruit training. And the end of being a recruit for you. Then that's crazy thinking that a lot of these guys must have went to Vietnam after this. And I, 1960, I don't know if there's really a whole lot going on as far as like, you know, big conflict. But yeah, a lot of these guys must have went to Vietnam. And it's kind of weird thinking that they didn't know that that was coming, you know. I'm on. You'll be a Marine. Graduation was cool. Everybody was just so ready to get out of there, though. I think we had a couple the people pass out because it was like hot. Recruit platoons receive a personal letter from the general, and will take their place in the reviewing area while the rest of the men pass in review. It's been a tough and demanding 12 weeks, but the feeling of achievement is worth it. And you know that whatever happens and wherever you go from here on in. You'll never forget your days as a recruit. Hmm. Yeah, dude, the uniforms are so similar. Even, like, the shooting badges are the same. So he's got expert, and he actually had a... He qualified on the pistol as well. That's kind of cool. He's as a recruit. Yeah, and, of course, all the families like when the band comes through. Well, you're actually using the music to stay in step and whatnot. Because you can't really hear your drill instructor that well. And then the parade deck is pretty much exactly the same. For these men, this is the end of an important time in their lives as Marines. It's also only a beginning. Now they can begin to really master their profession. Advanced training is ahead in which each one of them will learn to use virtually every weapon of modern infantry combat. Yeah. After that, assignment in the Fleet Marine Force. They've weathered a rugged 12-week hey, transition FMF, from boy nice. to man, and they'll never be the same again. They are, as they'll be glad to tell you, United States Marines. <laughs> I like how they threw that in there. It's true, but good grief. 
Yeah, even the music is the same. Dude, those flags are so heavy. <laughs> Staying upright is impressive. Alright. Again, I love the old school stuff. You guys know I love checking out the old school stuff. And especially Marine Corps boot camp. It really hasn't changed that much, but it is kind of cool to see some of the nuances. The, those PT uniforms, I gotta say, were pretty god awful. And I think they did a pretty smart job in how they did it for us because our shorts, you know, we had our green PT shorts. We just ended up wearing that for underwear most of the time. And then, like, the green PT shirts, like the short sleeve shirt, was also the same as the undershirt, which is really nice. Because in the Army and the Navy, obviously, the, the PT uniforms are different. You can't use the undershirt as a PT shirt. But it is kind of nice in the Marines if you're, you know, if you're wearing your camouflage uniform, you could just take off your blouse, take off your trousers, and then you have your shorts underneath, and then you can just, you know, do stuff like that. So I guess it's versatile. It's a very Marine Corps mindset to just always be ready to, to PT, I guess. But yeah, definitely cool to check out. And it is really weird considering, you know, this was before Vietnam and you're thinking, you know, a lot of these guys must have actually went on to serve in Vietnam, which is, again, pretty cool to see. Pretty cool to see how they're actually training and whatnot. The, there's definitely a little bit more physical fitness than, you know, what I remember in boot camp and also more aggression in general as far as the pugil sticks and then also the bayonet training. But the rifle range looked pretty similar. The drill was pretty similar. And again, the facilities looked pretty much exactly the same as when I went through. But yeah, very cool. If you guys are some old school Marines and you know you saw some similarities or some differences, let me know down in the comments section. And also if you're a new Marine, let me know how it compares because I gotta say, when I was leaving Marine Corps boot camp, we saw all this new gear coming in, like all the platoons that you know started after us. And we were getting pretty jealous. I mean, we had ACOGs on our M16, so it still was pretty modern. But as far as our gear, that was very old school. But yeah, let me know how it compares. If you guys have any other recommendations for old school documentaries, I am more than willing to check them out. This is a really cool channel. It's called The Best Film Archives. And they have a lot of really, really fascinating stuff. So I'll put the original video in the description if you guys want to check it out. But thank you for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.